Deliver. No. Hey, how can I get a, a casual hey, Tuesday? Hey, <laughs> hey, how are you, everyone? Tuesday here? Flight. What is it, Tuesday? Yeah, it's Tuesday. Can I get a, hey, how, how are you? Chicks, here? I guess? I don't I'm know. talking right now, Kilmer. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be a hey, how are you, or else I can't. He's like, sound yeah, check, guy. Sound check. Hey, how are you? I'm literally talking. I'm literally I can't checking get a understands sound. understands one language. <laughs> we do this in the hey, how are you metric. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how are you? <laughs> yeah, no, we're good. We can start right He's like, no, no, no. Hey, how are you? Okay, we're good now. We're good. Give me two hey, how are you? So, First off, I want to start with highlighting such a, the type of guy I'm sitting across from. <laughs> I think I've lived with these guys for a decade. I've never gotten a gift. You're not a big gift guy. We're not gift fair. guys. Yeah. I, I was. I, I will preface it with we don't exchange gifts. <laughs> I'm not yeah. a big gift guy either. To no, be, no, it was, uh, a, to it's be fucking adorable, and it's <laughs> oh, look it's at a Cub Strowman. He's like, you probably have ten of these already. This is actually the first. You don't even have one. I don't have Marcus one. Marcus didn't even give Hell you one. Hell yeah. Marcus, what the fuck, <laughs> bro? Suck it, Marcus. Yeah, I was, I, so I was sitting with Marcus in Malibu at his spot with his newborn. and you had, cute as hell. Yeah, super cute. Yeah. And you had texted me uh, right when I was with him that you got that. So thank you very much. You got it. I, it was from that book, The Seven Spiritual Laws. I was having like a weird week and I was like, all right. I was like, how do you feel better? And I was like, oh, I'm, I got like, I got a few of my friends like Christmas stuff. And then, of course, I, plug, I texted you, but I plugged yours in. And it was like, oh, it'll be ready when I first did it in like, you know, in a week, which was Christmas. And then the next email I got was, was like, you'll get it by uh, February. And I'm like, oh, that's not right. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, she, my, Lacey called me. She's like, it's here. I'm like, Fire. that's fucking wild. Love that. Very thoughtful I'll take of it. you, sir. <laughs> hey, it's one, thing to, it's one thing to like accept the knowledge and be called to it. Another thing to keep it in practice. You know I'm trying, I mean? man. And we're years, we're what? what from our first. Uh, Two years. From no, our first year pod, we're over a year. Year and a half. I think it was. Yeah. Pretty crazy. Yeah. Right here in Scottsdale. Uh, where we're, we're that max. Was, uh, oh, yeah. That was actually uh, December of the previous yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. Yeah. So, like, a little over a year ago, Caleb, yeah. I had the podcast with the Barstool guys. And I just yeah. saw him last week. Too. I saw someone sent me a picture of you and him talking. And I was like, just two legends. He was legends. so drunk. <laughs> two legends in the wild. Yeah. And Glennie was there. Yeah. <laughs> it's even better. Where did you see them? Um, so, a uh, tournament last week was in San Diego, and our friend. Uh, Amanda Balionis does this cool like charity puppies and golf where she t uses golf um, as like a link and then they uh, she's big in like the dog community as far as like getting them adopted mm -hmm. so she it's like a big fundraiser and then I walked in and someone's like hey you know Caleb uh, Presley's here and I'm like why like I had no idea he was even in town I guess he was interviewing Spieth for a Sunday conversation mm -hmm. and I see him and Glennie over there just chopping it up on the, <laughs> on the little putting course and we hung out for a little bit. Caleb was a, he was like, I'm, I'm just trying to get so drunk. I sleep the whole flight. And I'm like, I've tried that. That is a horrible Doesn't idea. Doesn't usually work. No, you just feel like shit when you land. How's, uh, how's Caleb's golf game coming along? It better. He's getting it? better. Yeah. He honestly, I'll give him this. He's super athletic. Um, he is. Yeah. And his golf swing looks fine. He's like clearly not like, he doesn't ha like get it yet. Mm -hmm. Like his touch is not good. But his swing is like, he could be decent. But he's also, he's, the thing people forget, he's so busy. It's not like he, like, yeah. he's, he's living this like, you know, 51 strokes thing, like he, like, but he also has a job, right? so he's not like a full-time yeah. golfer yet. Do you think he has promised to be a good golf player? Yeah, I mean. Like a decade from now, the maybe? The champion store is, is <laughs> the goal. I don't think that's on the mask. Does, I don't know does if that's football, like, not translate to golf at all? Like, do you notice, like, football players are terrible at golf? Um, I think there's two issues. The O-linemen are the best. It's the hands, I swear. They got like soft hands. It's like the Mighty Ducks thing. Like, you know, the edge. Like, yeah, yeah. It's something like that. Soft but it hands. makes no sense because they're so big. Uh, I feel like height for like the quarterbacks is tough because you're so far from the ball. There's almost like a, it's like the basketball thing. It's just like, mm. it's almost too awkward. But there's some, uh, like Steph Curry's amazing. Yeah. But um, yeah, I really think that a lot of like the very good football players, it's probably why Caleb's going to be a good golfer is because like most of the football players are super jacked. Caleb's not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and But like if you're that big, it's, I think it's just hard to move. <laughs> who's, this, who's the most, is there any guys who are jacked? Like, that On are really, tour, uh, Bryson and Bryson. Brooks are both pretty big. Um, there's a guy named Scott Stallings who's actually a beast. He didn't look it right away. Uh, he was he had something. He was pretty chubby and like fat, mm -hmm. and found out he had some things. So he's been on this like crazy health kick. He loves mm -hmm. working out. He is probably somebody who I would like. He might not be like look the biggest, but he uh, he could he could beat a lot of people in a fitness competition. I want to say the last time I saw you, we played a little pickup basketball. Yeah, <laughs> and, and Max you was like me a few times. Max was like fucking competing. Was like, this that Cody's good defense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> shooting it just. Just literally, like, you you wouldn't know he's a pro golfer at all. Like, he was just, like, right in the pickup game. Like, I don't know how we got there. <laughs> oh, because I was playing. What me happened? And, me and Ruby, 
were, yeah. were shooting, and then I come out like Blue came out and started. He, he started trying to block me, so I was like, "Well, I'm gonna start playing one on one." Then, you, of course, you came out. I come moseying over. <laughs> Matt, Matt, Matt was like puking by the end because we were like kind of hanging out all night. Somehow, <laughs> somehow that turned into like a like. You know, I would I would call it like an eighty percent. It was eighty percent. I was having fun. It was funny because I made two shots, and next thing you know, you like you started throwing your weight around a little bit, and then I, I had was like, nothing. Fuck this shit. I, <laughs> I was, yeah. was like, that, was that the I, day I you out. drained that forty that forty foot uh, chip? Oh my, that was a night. I wasn't gonna mention the greatest it, you know? golf shot that's ever been hit. <laughs> wasn't gonna mention it. I know you're dying for someone to mention it, so I'll just be that <laughs> guy like, who yeah. mentions it. That's an all time video. Like that might be the best video. I don't ever. know if I can ever golf again after that. <laughs> no, I think I that's it. Walk us through what happened for those who didn't see it. Yeah, I just, I, so my buddy, our buddy Cody, uh, great little fucking, what would you call that? His backyard. What is that set up? That little, I don't, it's like a fun palace. Yeah, it's the Cody Alt fun <laughs> you palace. You got a basketball hoop, a huge pool, and then like a, probably like a 100, 120 foot putting green. Yeah, okay. In the back, and there's like a little area you can kind of chip off the turf, and I was screwing around chipping, and you came out, and you <laughs> asked me how your stroke was, and I was like, oh, you know, it's all right. I remember turning to him. I, First things first, I grabbed the club, I pulled my pants down. <laughs> yes, you my yeah, yeah, that's true. Because we all know that's how you play. <laughs> um, and then I was like, I, you could hear in the video, I'm like, I'm pretty sure my terminology, which is not proper golf, but he understood it perfectly. I was like, how's my volume here? <laughs> yeah, your volume, yeah. <laughs> just, just, you know, trying to get a gauge on what the, what like, you know, golf, like the swing speed on a Velocity? Chip. Yeah, but just like I don't know. Yeah, like how how Club how much velocity? do I go after the ball here yeah, if I'm yeah, trying yeah. to hit it? Yeah, you know. So like to put it to put it like visually, like it's a it's the biggest backyard putting green I've ever seen. Yeah. It's long and straight. Yes, so like long, yeah. I could take like a fairly good hack. Yeah, you could go and play down to the the holes towards the end. Like you're taking like it's like a pretty lengthy chip, right? Yeah, kind of? yeah. No, it's, it is for yeah. sure. Yeah. So. <laughs> Someone like I think you picked or someone picked like the fourth hole, the fourth one. It's probably like how many yards? It's probably four, uh, probably it's probably forty feet, fifty feet. Forty, forty, it's, fifty it's feet. That's a yeah. bomb. Yeah, it's, like wasn't a close. No, no, it's a bomb. <laughs> and I just I don't know why. Like I had it in my hand. I'm telling you, like, it's I, the, and it's the only one we video. It was the first one we videoed. First, like it was did the first I shot. One before I don't. That? You might have hit one practice one, but that was the first one you went at that hole. Yeah, you know, and yeah, Cody comes beautiful. over and just fucking and starts filming it. Like I didn't know we were gonna film it. He just films it. And um, yeah, it's funny because like Max home is there, <laughs> and, you and he's like played... he's like watch like a golf coach like behind me. He's like, yeah, yeah. You haven't played yeah. a he's lick like, of golf good. in your life. No, <laughs> I've never seen you swing a club. If I'm in your out life. there, I'm belligerently drunk. <laughs> you couldn't <laughs> prove us wrong. The thing went in dead weight <laughs> money, but the, my favorite part because the video is as fun as it was in person. The video rewatching is so great because everyone goes nuts. Everyone's running around the backyard, <laughs> but you. Still had your pants down so you're like waddling <laughs> you're running run around. Around. i'm pretty sure i went right into push-up <laughs> yeah. as a celebration and then you know pulled the pants up it was up. so good it's the best shot ever but i don't think i can i don't think i can golf again you know I think no that's you can't it. i've never seen tiger woods make a shot with pants around his ankles yeah so, I, mean, I mean i, I think like i'm tiger woods i think i jumped up to number one, <laughs> yeah, number one ranking. it's pretty quick in the bible many people experienced name changes and those name changes were very pivotal moments in their lives. You have transformed through your time here, and you need to have a new name that represents that transformation. I'm excited for all the journeys you'll go on from here, and I trust that you will impact many people's lives in the process. I'm honored to have known you. For now, your name is Steve. OnlySteves.com. Speaking of rankings, um, I was skis is a golf guy, like loves it and just like skis is the man. By the he's way, he's the fucking man. <laughs> I'm gonna make him a popping artist. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. Um, he's he, he has all like the talent and the charisma is crazy. Yeah, he's just like I'm gonna put him. He's opening the tour. Yeah, like, we had him on the podcast yesterday. And, like I wanted people to understand, he's never played a show. <laughs> yeah, he just like, he, 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 he literally like played an acoustic set in front of like thirty of his friends. So now he's got to get it. <laughs> and like we're bringing him on our biggest show ever. Yeah, our, our biggest shows. You know, so these are gonna be pretty <laughs> fucking big. Just throwing them right into the fire. Hey, but uh, he's 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 ready. Yeah. Um, but he was. We were sitting somewhere. I think we were we were having lunch, and there was golf on, and I was just like. You know, you know me. I'm not watching a lot of sports. I was like, "How's my guy Max doing? Like, fill me in." He's like, "Bro, he's like eighth in the <laughs> yeah, ranking." Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So what is, walk us through that, the golf, especially the people There's that aren't super familiar with the season. Two big rankings in golf. It's world ranking, which is like a running two-year scale. And then there's the season PJ Tour rankings called FedEx Cup. And um, that essentially would be, to put it in like the easiest terms, it would essentially be like if you played uh, your football team each week, if you like won or did whatever, you would get an X amount of points at the end of the year. If you end up with the most points, you win like player of the year and you get, there's a huge like money bonus or whatever. But that's like our Super Bowl for lack of a better phrase. Yeah. So um, yeah, so right now you, um, I think I just moved to 10th, but. It's, yeah, it's just a running scale, so you get uh, X amount of points for each finish, uh, and then they get heightened as you get to the four majors and then, like, the playoffs. So is this year. the highest you've ever been on that? Uh, well, it was funny because I won the first term of the season, so I was one, and I was like, <laughs> it's, it's, almost, it's almost too intimidating because yeah, I had to yeah, be that for the rest that. of the year. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, this is uh, – I've been la – last year – so top 30 uh, – if you make top 30 with the uh, last tournament, it's called Tour Championship. That's, like, the – I've never made it that far. Last year was close I got. I think I was 30th going into the last week and didn't make it. Mm -hmm. um, but that's like the that's like the that's like the big goal, that's I guess. Goal. Um, yeah. it's, it's it's like anyway, it's top 30 for the season. It's like kind of tough, tough air to get to. Uh, yeah. So this is but this is definitely like I'd never played well in the fall before. So I played well in the fall and usually like metrics say like you do well there. It's a lot easier to kind of keep it up. So this is the best position this you've is been in so far. Easily the best. Yeah. I usually I usually kind of get it going around this time of the year, but. For some reason, September. I think I take my, my off season starts early. I think, <laughs> I think that's the problem. It's uh, I'm uh, like, well, Halloween's around the corner. <laughs> and Mike's birthday. <laughs> yeah, Mike's birthday. I mean, we all know what happens on Mike's birthday. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, uh, you gotta. It's funny. It's an interesting metric. You're just talking about like the cumulative, cumulative vibe of that. It's like. You know, you mentioned something earlier, like in passing, you're like, oh, I was having a rough week, so I, that's why. Yeah. And it's like, talk about a test of life is like just, a, like, that's how I feel. Like, literally, day, when the sun rises, you get up. <laughs> it's like, you know, you have that. That's the beautiful part of, like, every day feels like a fresh start, you know? Yeah. But really, when you start to put it together, it's, what, it's all based on consistency. Yes. It's what this, you know, like, what you get rewarded for if you, like, really just... You're starting one, right? You're starting at first. It doesn't matter if you keep it at first. Yeah. But just like putting together this season where even when it gets shitty, you just don't let it snowball. Yeah, you know what I mean? exactly. You get ahead of it. That's the cool part about golf too is any, any, uh, every week, like if you play like shit, the very next week it is, everyone starts at the exact same. I yeah. mean, you can still maybe not feel great about things, but you could flip it around. One of my closest buddies was on the worst skit he's had uh, as a as a PJ Tour player, and then he, he won the next week. And it's just like, that's Who's how that? fast it got. Joel Damon. Mm. And that's how fast it could go. And it's just funny because, no, like, we always talk about it. Everybody else, uh, like, when you're playing bad, you feel like everyone knows it and, like, oh, whatever. Like, it's just like it's a burden. But, mm -hmm. like, I didn't know Joel's even playing that bad. Like, you don't, because it doesn't, because it, it's so much more obvious to me to be like, oh, he'll just snap out of it and play great, right? But I'm in the same spot where I'll play bad and be like, I'm never going to hit another good shot <laughs> yeah. the rest of my there's, life. There's a lesson in life there, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a metaphor. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, the, the, whole, the, whole fucking, <laughs> the whole fucking sport. I remember when we had our first conversation, I was like, like sports itself, but like especially something about golf, like, and even baseball too, like that kind of failure, like, it's based around a lot of failure. It's yeah, very hard. It's mostly to, failure. Yeah, and it's like all about like life is. It's just like all about it putting a fucking piece of work together, and like the consistency of it is really where you get rewarded. You yeah. know. But that thought right there, I just saw a thing about self empathy, and it's just like it's exactly that notion. It's just like if you fuck up, you're like in your head, your self talks like fucking idiot. Yeah. Like, of course. What do you think was gonna happen? Like, of course, you know. Um, this, but imagine if your friend, if you came up to me like I fucked up, what would I say? I'd yeah, be like, no, it's all right, bro. Like, yeah. It's gonna be fine, you know. Joe said that my caddy Joe, like, I mentioned a bunch, like one of my closest buddies. He had a great one this year, and uh, we were in the playoffs, first playoff event. Um, and I had not been playing well going into it, and like I said, I'm right around that 30 number, so I, it was a lot of like pressure, stress, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, we're in the fairway on the last day, like out of, like on maybe like our third hole, but out of contention, whatever, just trying to like have a nice day and, you know, make some money. Mm -hmm. And he was like, he's like, hey, after we're done, I want to talk to you about something. He didn't say that a lot. So I'm like, no, I was like, yeah, I can't, you got to tell me right now. Tell me <laughs> now. I'm like going to fucking think about it all day. Yeah. So he's like, okay, well, he's like, here's the deal. He's like, 
you give uh, me all of the freedom in the world. If I screw up, it's like you just look at me. You're like, oh, you know, it's fine. Like, whatever. We'll get past it. He goes, if Lacey does something, he's like, you just like, it like flows right off you. If like my waiter comes up, if I order a steak and my waiter comes out and gives me um, like a piece of broccoli, I'll be like, oh man, like he's probably having not a great day. Like mm -hmm. I'm not going to get it. Like I yeah. give everyone so much room. He's like, but with yourself, if you do one thing wrong, it's like you just bash yourself. He's like, you cannot keep being that person to you and then this like nice mm. call, or uh, kind of like empathetic person to everyone else and i was like man that is actually a great point because to your point it's like facts we are so much harder on ourselves than we are on other people and uh, my dad used to say it best when i would just like dog cuss myself he said hey if, if anybody else talked to you like you talked to you i'd fucking kill him <laughs> and i'm like yeah it's I should crazy, probably. Bro. but you just get used to it i don't know it's weird and, and it's about breaking that programming and yeah this, you're doing it you know like since we've talked, I feel like you've become, since that time, right? If you zoom out and just since I've known you, like you were already like, you know, the funny guy on Twitter. I remember we had that conversation, like you're, that was a thing. <laughs> it feels like you're kind of, it seems as though you're kind of just organically falling into this spot of like being the guy who's like shining a light on this aspect of yeah. it, like trying to talk about you know it's not the end of the world like I'm, I'm your perspective and your outlooks as you're playing and how you stay happy and it seems like you're kind of stepping into that role which is really fucking cool well, you know it's, what I mean? it's a lot it's a lot like what you, you guys have been doing though is like the more you talk about it too and you're like obviously a public figure and a lot mm -hmm. of people like look up to what you say and do mm -hmm. if you talk about it you better live it or else people are going to jump it's on like you a, so it helps like a me a little bit yeah it's, yeah exactly it like holds me accountable because if i'm acting like a a baby i realized that i'm telling everybody you can't do that yeah and it still happens here and there but it's definitely it is fun i think uh i've always struggled with things that aren't tangible as far as like golf goes to be like that's helping me mm -hmm. so this one's been fun because i've kind of let it go and then i look back as, as you're saying like reminiscing like a year and some change i'm like dang like i looked at something not tangible and i'm clearly not just a golf like i'm clearly like a i feel much more comfortable with like who i am and i'm much I can release, I can separate the bad golf and the good life and like they don't have to Huge. be interchanged. I'll still, you know, mope here and there, but mm -hmm. um, that's the fun stuff. But that's the hardest part about sports though is like having that, I feel like, and also having a killer instinct and like trying to read these books and learn these things that, while also maintaining like a, I still don't want to lose yeah. thing. Cause that's hard. Sometimes you don't want to just float. Like if you're a pitching and you're, 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 you're having a, a, a bad game it's not like you can just like smile and, oh you know it's okay we'll get him next mm -hmm. time it's like yeah you will like that's okay but mm -hmm. you still have to have some of that like fire i guess so that's the hard blend yeah and it's like it's a few different ways of looking at it but it's like in but the, the the theory like the frame the framing they say in baseball is like or on on fields like in between the lines you're yes. so and so yeah outside you know you don't take it outside the lines yeah. right so like we've talked about this i remember in the first one a bit and like I still feel the same way. It's like anything in life, it's balancing that. Like yeah. the Tao of like it, it, the way is no extremes. Yeah. So it's not too much. Oh, whatever. Yeah. And it's not too much. Oh my God. You yeah, know, like yeah. and it's literally right in the middle and like the healthy balance that you navigate, it's your being. So yeah. you know, you weigh in with how you feel, you know, over the ball and you just fucking let it fly. But what I will say is like, you know, you being wanting to win there's no, like you just being a great golfer, you're in the fucking PGA Tour, you know what I mean? You're one of the greatest to play, right? Alive right now. So you're going out there, like all the work you've done is done. Sure, it's that's time for the you hard, to just yeah. be. Let it, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, you just be you. You did yeah, all the work. Like, exactly. So you being like, I gotta try harder. I don't, I'm not okay with how I'm playing. Yeah. You know, like. It's not helping. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's debatable. You know, it's whatever makes you tick. You know what yeah. I mean? But I feel like you being who you are you're so easy going just being you you know yeah. and it looks when i see you you know it looks like you're who, no one knows what's going on inside your noggin besides you but it seems as though you found that sweet spot and no, no one feels like they've arrived ever but yeah. just looking from a guy who like really wasn't thinking about the mind or like it yeah, just seems all. like it's become <laughs> part of you pretty quickly you know for sure it's like um I guess I what I'm most pleased with is I feel like when I go play a golf tournament, I feel the same as when I'm not playing a golf tournament, like as a person. I used to feel like I had just like a pit mm. and not in a, always a bad way, but like it was like I like turned something on and that would turn off 
the things that I'm sure like make me like a, a good like person. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's like, well, it's pretty hard to function as like if like there's a lot of guys on tour that are like robot, like robotic. Like I'm sure a lot of athletes like super like mo- like monotone, like flatliners and especially in golf. Especially in golf. And you get a lot of those, but those guys typically play like that as well, or they're like that off the golf course. And for me, I'm like kind of goofy and silly. I don't take a lot seriously. Uh, off the golf course, but on the golf course, you obviously have to be a little bit more. But I'm trying to be a little more like lighthearted. Like if I see something that's funny, like you know, me and Joe will talk about fine. I don't have to like put on this like, oh, I'm, you know, I, Tiger Woods is different, man. Tiger Woods is laser focused uh, mm-hmm. as he looks, and it doesn't mean that I'm less focused. It's just I'm more me, and like mm-hmm. that's how I get through my days. That's how I practice. That's how I do everything. But you do it with like you uh, do it with like aggression and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But that's the that's the I don't know when you watch like because I was just thinking about because you guys just brought it up before we hopped on, but like Travis Kelsey. I got to meet him like last year. He's a big goof. Where did like, you meet him? Dude. I played golf with him uh, and a bunch of the other Chiefs. Uh, Pat Mahomes, Matt Moore was, is is their backup, and he's from my hometown. He's mm-hmm. Joe's like good buddy, so he invited us to play with all of them. Kyle Long's out there. He's a legend. Was that was that the one where it was like a public thing? There were people watching, like fans there and stuff. No, or, no, or this was just this uh, just, a homie just thing. them. Yeah, and they uh, and but they're they you know they're you know him. He's a clown, but just he's awesome. Man. But when he plays football, he's the same dude. I mean, he's obviously like more intense, but he's yeah. funny and like yeah. and I don't know, like just everything he did. So you're still being the same person. And he's clearly one of the best to do it. So it's like you can be both things. Mm-hmm. You can be fun. You can be all that if that's who you are. And then other people are, you know, Brady is a robot. Like, and but that's how he plays football too. So mm-hmm. it's like you kind of have to be who you are. Or else I don't know. I feel like you get out over your skis a little bit. But mm-hmm. that's the fun part. I don't know. It's just it's almost like releasing it and be like I'm gonna be. Me, and then, like you said, I'm just going to see what that means. Mm-hmm. And then that freedom is hard to get to, but it's that's the fun. I don't know. I think that's the fun Yeah, part. it's a journey to it. Yeah. And if you make this part of the game, you know, like you said something earlier about just like separating things and like even just separating the two lives in a sense, like golf and, you know, it's just like if you – if you view it all as just one game, like yeah. the competitiveness that you have with golf, like even just like staying on top of the books, staying on top of your self-awareness, yeah. staying on top of your self-empathy, you know, staying present. You know, you said you were having a bad week. You're like, how can I yeah. go back to the well? Yeah. Like these are all things that like, as you know, you've learned firsthand, like they are part of the game. Yeah. They are. Yeah. Because they set you up. They free up space for you to be creative. Exactly. And be, connected you know exactly like, and it feels like you've been i just love seeing like pga accounts post you and yeah. post that <laughs> that whole thing of just you kind of having that realization out there and translating it to your game since the dawn of time men have always loved to chug beer in the old times of bavaria the men of germany would spend their october fest drinking out of a festive beer stein in the 1980s fraternity brothers all over america spent their greek week pounding beer out of a funnel And for the last four decades, the world went silent. Then came the Chug Bud, the new revolutionary way to chug a beer. With the combination of a beer bong and a shotgun, this drinking device is scientifically proven to help you chug your beer quickly and easily. Oh, and did I mention it fits in your pocket? Go to ChugBuds.com and use promo code YNK69 to get 10% off your entire order. That's ChugBuds, C-H-U-G-B-U-D-S dot com and promo code YNK69 to get 10% off your entire order. ChugBud, your beer just got a new best friend. How do you feel like, personally, fuck any political answer, how do you feel as though overall you feel like you are staying on path with it? Has it been hard yeah, to oh keep yeah, up? Yeah, it gets hard. I, like, especially I noticed like, late in the season, uh, it just like it's not on the tip of my mind. Then when like the off season comes, or I have downtime. I'm like, okay, I'm back in it. But like, I you put me on uh, the four agreements, mm-hmm. and I was pissed because I haven't even read it yet. Mm-hmm. But on the uh, we drove home from uh, San Diego. So this is long drive, yep. and uh, Lace was listening to um, Atomic Habits, which is a good, a good book. One. I hadn't read it yet, but so I listened to the last like two ish hours of it with her, and it, that so I was glad. I was like, okay, cool. So like I. Um, um, it got me like kind of back in the wave where I was excited to mm-hmm. read something again uh, and, because that was a really interesting one. It's a little less like self-helpy as like yep. happiness goes, but it was really interesting for like how to better prepare to like succeed and how to put yourself in a position to succeed. And it kind of re 
wiring how you think about your day to day. So that was good. But I definitely go through the ebbs and the flows. And what's funny is it's very apparent that when I was getting late in the season and I wasn't doing all the stuff as much, that's when I was playing like shit. And I was also grumpier. And it's, it's like, related. buddy, you have to. <laughs> it's related. <laughs> this is not like a. This is not a, a, a coincidence. Like you got off it, and, and it it's started facts, to spiral. Bro. But it's so easy to go back to like your your general, um, like your 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 reflex when you're pissed is typically to go away from that. And my reflex was obviously just I went away from. it. I was like, oh, I'm just gonna practice more, practice more. It's like, yeah, like you weren't really doing all of that in the off season, and then it came out playing good. You were doing the other so I was more focused on my mind than I was on my golf really so it's sometimes like, it's nice to hear that out loud here yeah say for that, sure that's the truth but it's that's the thing but that's the other part i try to preach to people who ask me about the stuff that we talk about mm -hmm. i'm like you don't have to you're not going to be perfect no like don't expect but it's it's like why i think why we've talked about it on this like it's how i've always viewed like dieting is like if i say i'm going to go on a diet or i'll hear people say they're going to go on a diet and then that like two days later they fall off and then mm -hmm. and, and now and they eat some shitty now Good it's like oh i'm off but it's <laughs> yeah. like no you can literally stop the next meal like yeah. you are allowed to just quit so if i catch myself being like i just i guess i did last week where i'm like do you haven't read the book like you haven't done anything and then i i'm like well you can start it like right this moment if right you now. want to yeah. and like let's get back going mm -hmm. but that's i don't know why i guess as people that's fucking hard to do self-awareness is uh it's like a double-edged sword oh yeah <laughs> because <laughs> it'll make you hate yourself at times yeah so like it's really it's an interesting thing like we we started with that self empathy thing and it like it literally is almost like a necessary prerequisite <laughs> to self awareness yeah because the more you shine your light on something the more you're going to find yeah so it's way better i actually was in the i was in the cold tub I, we have a, we've been I've, been I've gotten on that wave just sure. recently bullied myself Wim, into do you it do the wim hof mm -hmm. stuff yeah. yeah and it's amazing yeah it's, it's probably nuts. been it's, probably something you should fuck with i've tried the uh that cold shower stuff or i think dude, the cold tub's easier than the cold okay because do i get in there now like and the I ricocheted just, like, water like, i just ah. like slowly get it as cold as i can and i just stand there and i'm just, just like i hate this but i leave and i feel great but i'm like what am i doing no yeah. one no one cares that i'm doing this that's how i feel yeah yeah but yeah okay but i'm gonna try dude, the cold tub instead dude, dude like yes so yeah sunday had ate like a fucking fat pig <laughs> for two days. Wasn't inspired to do anything. Have a lot of like business stuff going on. I was like kind of clouded. I felt disconnected. Sure. Felt like my fucking antennas <laughs> broke. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, you know, sitting here bullshitting. And we're watching the game. Great game of football. Uh, great day of football with the guys. We had skis. We're fucking on the grill. You know, it was yeah. good. Loose, light vibes. Yeah. And then, you know, not the normal typical day since i've started that i would go hop in the cold tub like sure. usually that's like meditate read out in the sun get hot going yeah you know and then i went and did it and it was like super cold like we had filled it all up with ice panicked through the entire thing <laughs> hated it during get out literally couldn't stop laughing like the endorphins oh, i yeah. had from like the dopamine that's wild and um and then like i hadn't been inspired to make a song in like a week i go in there and just like spit that's out like crazy. a fire song that's crazy hadn't been inspired <laughs> yeah and it was just like wow and then in there i was in, i had this thought and you know it's not an original thought like i'm sure i've come across it or something but it's just like you can have growing pains or you can have lasting pains and the growing pains are like a choice where you're like you know what i'm not going to go to the party you know like i'm actually going to read i don't feel like reading i'm going to sit here i'm going to slow down i'm going to read i'm going to meditate i'm going to go in the cold plunge and it fucking sucks yeah but what that does residually to you it teaches you like one you can do anything you put your mind to two sure. like on the other side of pain is usually the best pleasure yeah. you know and at the end of the day if you don't make those sacrifices and you don't go for the shit you want to go for the pain you're stuck with at the end it's kind of irreversible yeah it's the regret that old people feel yeah like, they're just like because hey, you did it to your own self yeah My, uh will smith had this i caught it on uh some like real or someone on instagram mm -hmm. uh, there's an old speech he was talking about he's talking about how the two most important things he thinks in life uh to like better yourself are reading and running and they're both very similar but mm -hmm. i remember the running one better so when you're running you have a voice in your head the whole time telling you that you can stop stop it's like stop oh no i'm not i said i'm gonna go four i'll go three i'm doing good I, i'm gonna go three but three i did, he's more, like, than, if, did more than yesterday yeah. Yeah. yeah he's like but if you can beat that own voice in your head you got full-on control and mm -hmm. that's the hard part because there's times when you know i'll uh 
get invited to go do something. And it's like one of those days where I'm like, we didn't really plan on doing it. And I, it's not like I don't want to, but it's not like I really wanted to. I was like, oh, I want to wake up early tomorrow. And those are the days where it's like, when I don't go, I wake up in the morning like so cheerful because mm. I'm like proud of myself. And mm. it wouldn't probably wouldn't have changed anything major, but it's like, all right, I didn't really care that much about going. It's like, why am I going to go do something that I didn't really care to when mm. my bed looks real comfy? I go to bed at eight o'clock, wake up at five and get my day started. Whereas the other way, yeah, I'll have fun for four hours. Emmanuel uh, Acho had the same thing. He said that he thinks that the uh, difference between successful and being unsuccessful is uh, uh, trading the things you want now for the things that you want later. Uh, want later in your life and it's like that's hard to do that mm. because it's hard to be aware of what that is but that's the, that in the long run that's fun but also like doesn't mean that you can't also go have fun the times you do want to you go do it it's like but that, that's the blend because um, you gotta read uh you gotta i'll put you on some new things every time we sit down yeah but just just i learn, need it because i've been slacking. yeah learning <laughs> learning about the dao it's t-a-o it's Taoist, like a Taoist philosophy which is it's a branch from Buddhism, kind of, yeah. you know, Eastern philosophy, but it's literally translates the way. Yeah, and um, it's all about it's all about f fucking floating downstream. Yeah, never resisting. So like your intuition like knows when you're supposed sure. to go out and tie one on with the boys and fucking yeah. send it, you know, yeah. and do the things that because you can't go through life constantly just thinking about the consequences yeah, yeah yeah you know what i mean so it's like this balance you know that's all we keep circling is just like you know like it really is that balance like some of the things some of the moments you have when you do go to the party they can they become a part of you like, oh yeah they become a part of you in a positive way as much as well shit i went to i went over to your place first time we met because caleb invited me to come hang out with the boys there and go. it was a tie one on up till 5 a.m night sure but it's was. also one of like the days i look back on that like really is like changed like everything about like i love that. my mm -hmm. stuff so it's not bad to always go i think about that with johnny a lot like i was just with him a couple of days ago mm -hmm. and i ever like i always like think of what he said like says about that stuff he's like it's not he's like people had a problem with what i was doing he goes i didn't have a problem with it but it burnt me out because of how much people cared about what i was doing mm -hmm. and it's like it's interesting because it's there's a stigma to having fun in, in athletics you shouldn't yeah you should have been practicing right now Who like, says? i should be at the gym right now like i don't know why yeah. people think that but like that, that 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 is in that is a really really bad look because some people don't like to go out and have fun their view of fun maybe is watching tv which is great too or whatever yeah. it might be some but you need to distract yourself at some point and right. you need to enjoy your life at some point because you can't go grumpy to go practice or do anything because you end up just sucking regardless right. but for some reason the athletics you know someone hears you're out and about oh look at that guy he's out and about it's like yeah. i i could have zero beers but be at the bar and i'll have the best time ever and someone would be like don't you have to leave tomorrow i was like yeah man i mean i'm not doing anything different right but it's like that 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 balance too is making sure that you are enjoying yourself at times and then knowing when to shut it off and then go grind i guess mm -hmm. uh, so that but that that's to your point that's the not resisting it's trusting trust your gut and being like am i doing this because i i want to do it or am i doing this because i think this is what other people want me to do, and I'll go mm -hmm. hang out. It's and, like, dude, this is a constant battle. Like, I, I'm, you know, you might think I have this shit. I don't. Like, there's so many times I'm constantly checking in. Like, I, I feel, <laughs> I'm like, what am I, living by a checklist? Yeah, My yeah. own fucking illusionary checklist in there? Like, sometimes I'm pissed at the level of self-awareness. I'm, And I'm like, dude, relax. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, so it is, it's just... It's a fucking like it's the it's life, bro. Yeah, like, life is ebbs it's and flows. It's the corniest movie that, uh, but it's great for this. Is Yes Man? Yeah, with Jim Carrey. Mm -hmm. Great is movie. It actually, great. I mean, it's a great movie. It's a great flick. I just rewatched it recently. Does it? It's a yeah. good one to watch because it makes you kind of be like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, sure. I'm gonna go on a hike with a bunch of strangers today and yeah. see what happens. I don't know. Like that stuff's pretty good. Like, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, and like that, that notion was huge for me we had an episode i think it was the third episode of this podcast it was like what it means to be alive me and you were just mm -hmm. like sitting i was just like venting i didn't i didn't know what was going on in my life i'm like i was like i like speaking out loud. i was just like <laughs> i'm pretty sure i only have fun if i'm fucked up like pretty sure that sounds like a really bad thing like an I, addict i asked if you had any hobbies you're like uh no no <laughs> Yeah, and like that's now, a tough realization. Yeah, and then like <laughs> sent, like now when I look at myself now, I'm like that's not even true. I actually don't even have that much fun turning up anymore. I'm almost like waving the white flag on a lot of it, you know, because we've done it so much. But it's, 
It's like, bro, I have a fucking ball, like sitting on the balcony looking reading oh, looking yeah. at the fucking mountains going for a walk and it sounds fucking ridiculous <laughs> yeah you know but it's it's one of those things where it's like we're not necessarily saying you got to fucking tie one you gotta no, go no no go just nuts. whatever makes you yeah just like happy. make sure you're living you yeah, know? yeah. Make, make sure, sure you whatever that means that's the thing is for me i like i like going out i like being amongst the boys i like yeah. watching sports out with other people at a bar like i like the energy the vibe or whatever it is great energy and uh so the, i like that but i know people who yeah who just love reading and sitting uh you know by themselves some things that make like walking my dog or go, doing dog stuff like mm -hmm. that shit makes me happy uh, i guess I, that truly means i'm getting old yeah uh, but that's like that's the good stuff but i was gonna ask so given that because i know you've been on your health kick are you ready for the tour <laughs> I mean, look, we, uh, we've been speculating this for months. <laughs> we've been talking imagine. about this. Blue's excited, <laughs> yeah. not surprised. The whole town knows Blue's excited. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, look, no one's counting, but we're 78 days away. <laughs> um, no, but, you know, it's, uh, I, I will say this. I don't think touring will ever look the same for me. Oh, way, you can't. You yeah. know, like, it's just, we talked about this with skis. I think it might have been yesterday. It's just like, the way I used to operate on there, like me looking, this version of me looking, it's like, it's almost blasphemous, like what I was doing on tour, you know, just like the volume I was drinking and partying and like the volume of accessibility that I was, I wasn't giving any myself one ounce of privacy yeah, anytime, yeah. any day. Like I had none of this, like, I mean, it's crazy to think, but I just like, I wasn't. And I'd like, so the version of it, like, I'm really excited to tour this version of myself and, like, not, like, I'm going to have fun, obviously, sure. a bunch. But, you know, I really look forward to just being present and, like, and having fun without the part, like, the party aspect is what, I'm talking about, like, literally having, being ecstatic going on stage yeah. just for the sake of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? For the sake of what's happening and, like, you know, obviously just we've been through a lot as a brand and like the switch and it worked like the mic yeah. switch and it was a gamble. And like, so it's like, it will be a really nice payoff, you know, like, sure. And, and obviously, you know, it's, it's just going, it's going well. So it's like going to have a very celebratory vibe. I'm interested to see how ratchet I get if at all, because it's tough, bro. Like <laughs> it is like I'll party, but like, it's tough. I'm way more famous on tour just logistically speaking, right? Yeah. All these people are coming to a show. I'm on stage. All right, we're going next door. <laughs> yeah. They're all in there. And it's like, they just watch this fucking crush the show. I think what could be cool, though, is, it, and I could be completely wrong, but I could imagine that younger, go on tour. The tour is exciting because you can part, like you're going to party. It's going to be really fun. Now I feel like, give them new perspective, like, the, tour, the fun part of the tour, especially because of the COVID stuff, like you haven't done it forever. Now you're just like, maybe you have more appreciated perspective for like, I get to go sing these songs that, I mean, I've been seeing you guys, Spotify numbers are just outrageous. Yeah. That p you're like, the show is the fun part. Yeah. And then you could obviously have your fun after, but I feel like it's almost like a slight like reversal of, oh, we're gonna, Absolutely. can't wait till after the show. Now it's like, no, I can't wait till thousands yeah. and thousands of people are singing the same shit with me. And you know, just like how big it's gotten. Yeah. And just like, there's something a little more special about this for whatever reason. I don't know why. I think it's just my perspective. Like I, I just, I was kind of like, it was all a blur. I was just kind of a little <laughs> bit of in a fog as a person. Yeah. And uh, that was part of the realization, you know, but just like that should be moving, you know, like I can, I can think of sometimes I was moved on stage, but it should be moving like every time. Oh, yeah. And then like, also, just like I remember making these songs in my, I've, I've made all these songs in my room with no no one else there, you know. Like, so not to say I didn't do that in the past, but I did have help. Like, I was going to the studios, I was working with producers directly a lot, and it's just like these creations feel so much like a part of me. Like these little, just like working on a book for a while, yeah. and then like it goes out and it's a hit, and like people, you know, like just these little special times that I, you know, was just on a vibe in my room, like <laughs> creating art and actually being able to go out and exercise it. I th I'm looking forward yeah, to it. Yeah, I think that's going to be like, cool. It's going to be and really cool. And different, cool. different. Which is it's the most personal it's ever been. It is. Because you, uh, you look at Billie Eilish and Phineas when they made that their big album, it was at their childhood home and this yeah. bedroom that's like half the size of this living room mm. and they're just kind of stacked in there. It sounds like it. And um, it's, I mean, th they talk about it and saying it's like it was the most personal thing ever. And that's mm -hmm. why it was so great. Yeah. And, and that's, that's, 
been the fun part about how I've changed my creative process. We talked about it, I think, in the first episode we, we sat down. It's just like I, I've really kind of rein, reinvigorated music for myself by the way I approach creating it. Okay. And speaking to the personal personal ability of it, like, I don't know if that's a word, but just how personal it feels because it's so personal. Yeah. And it's just like, I remember those nights. Like, yeah. Even if I don't remember the nights. Yeah. Tangibly. Like, oh, I remember that. Like, we were fucked up. That was my birthday, Bender. I remember who was, you know, like, it, it just, they're all like moments in time, you know, in song form. And I can't say that it felt like that before, like, we went on this kind of like Stevenson Ranch tour of like, I'm really just going into my room and making it. It's yeah. in my bedroom. By the way, you have know? you told have you uh, told a story about the the day we all went to the fair and the first song we heard <laughs> at the hot dog that stand? Was that, that was weird. That was pretty weird. weird, yeah. That we, was weird. When we went to the Arizona State Fair. Yeah. First of all, I was blasted. Took too many mushrooms. We were that all, was, we you were all blasted, it. yeah. <laughs> that was a different... That was a different... That was a little different. The fact you made it through the swinging chairs, like you were just sitting there. Debatably. I was like, dude, Debatable if I made it through or not. I led you guys all through. I led like the most six most fucked up people ever through a fun house of mirrors. I'm the only one okay. And we're everyone's holding the person in front, and I'm like walking with my hands Zero out. Zero recollection. <laughs> so I fun. felt like the biggest sack of shit in that place because I was like taking hard drugs in the middle of a fair filled with children. I'm sure there's a handful of people doing And we won every prize in the I was, building. I was worried about we the clean cops. Them out. To clean them out. I'm worried about the cops seeing me, and there's like a six year old walking past me. I'm like, hey, keep a lookout. I'm going to take this real quick. Yeah. I mean, so. That, what was that? That was birthday week? A week, week prior. I was on Two a sick one. This was, this was kind of the beginning. That was, that we did agree, though. Lacey and I, that was the most fun night we had all year. How fun was that? We weren't really sure. We're like, fair. <laughs> like, I haven't been in one of those in a while. Oh, and it man. became fun. The, the, like, the first, we go up buy beers at the very first stand, and this guy on his little shitty radio, I was like, are you listening to this? And you're like, wait, is this a joke? I thought somebody put it on. And he, you're like, nice song, man. Or I whatever. think that He's was like, a lady. Yeah. It was a lady. It was a lady, cool. yeah. Hey, it was a fair, man. You it must have been a lady. I don't know. Fair. It's either here nor there. Yeah. Carnies, dude. Fucking yeah, carnies, I swore man. she had a beard, but... So, but she was like she was like older, didn't fit the profile of a Mike no, fan. No, but like the... My music's playing, and we're like, this is going to be a fun and night. And she was banging it, and she like... And this was just like... I had no idea who you total, were when the music total was on, which was even better. Yeah, total happenstance. And... and we just walked in like we're on a party bus. We fucking sent it the whole way. Like at least I did. I don't know. <laughs> uh, we were sending it the whole way. It was a crowded, crowded party bus. I remember us sitting in traffic and like just the timing of it for us to pull up. Yeah, it was too good. It was just like it was too real. What was the chances? <laughs> it was so perfect. And by no means a mainstream artist. By any, like it's not like one of those songs you just like. As you kept saying, you're like, I'm not popular enough for this to be on. I'm like, well, I, I feel like that we can argue Strange. it at this point. Strange. <laughs> it was uh, it, it's you know, and I take those as. I started. I started taking everything as it really. Anytime you can apply it to, it's it's a little wink from the universe. Oh yeah, it's just it like, was. Oh, you're right where you need yeah, to be. Yeah, like have fun. things are good. Yeah, yeah. yeah do your thing. <laughs> but I want to say after the fair. You might have posted some pictures, and I think people are like, "Are you guys, you and Mike dating?" I, I was just like in the pink <laughs> hat. I was just like standing behind you, and every as you played games, cheering you on like your wife would. And I think Lacey was right there with us. Well, I so the the we, we the testimony I always tell people or, or I speak to about how cool like you guys are, Cody and all them are like mm -hmm. how like the guys how like nice everybody is is she knows you guys obviously we're not like super well yeah and uh, that night uh, I didn't go to the bathroom and like anyone who's been to a fair it's not like they're just all over like they're in the corners of this yeah. massive fair so i like run to this thing i'm like lace you good should i like left her with cody and you i think mm -hmm. and she's like yeah, yeah i'll be fine or whatever so i come back and it takes me 40 minutes to find everybody and i come back <laughs> and lacy i finally find lacy i'm like not worried but like making sure she's having a good time and she's holding the biggest stuffed animal i've ever seen under her <laughs> arm she's like cody won this for me <laughs> and i'm like these guys are so cool like i was just like it was yeah. like such like a like a family fun aspect because you never really know, and everyone's yeah, everyone's partying, but also like making sure Lacey's winning winning prizes. <laughs> Lacey's a rock star; she's cool as fuck. We've <laughs> she had, had fun. We, we we got we got after her in Nashville and got acquainted. Nashville, she saw you. Got to see her. She saw you. She saw me. <laughs> yeah, she saw me in Nashville. <laughs> me, like me the whole town saw me. Me and Blue as many me and Blue drank as many white tea shots as humanly we, possible. We did. We did. 
Then we did a pod. We did a pod there. Yes. As well, yeah. That was, that was, oh, that was the day. After, right. I haven't even said this after. My stomach hurts so bad in that thing. I like thought I was about to, to call it midway. I was full sweating during that podcast. I told you after. I was like, dude, I didn't think I was going to make it. I had a rough patch in the middle. Yeah. Up till I, four, I mean, that's what I, happens I when you tough. drink about 90 <laughs> yeah. white tea shots. Yeah, all that sugar. Tough. That was tough. Uh, but man, um, that's kind of like a testament to why we've been in Scottsdale so long. Like, such a nice like the crews a fun out here group good. of guys yeah. you know everyone's like they just have big hearts i feel like yeah out here yeah and like some of them you they have they have like not reputations so you think of johnny like johnny's <laughs> like the quintessential like that guy's a douchebag <laughs> yeah and he's not no, he's the opposite he's not a douchebag no. like yes he does douchebag things sometimes yeah because he's zapped you but know? he's like, he's the uh, he's like a good fucking guy part of the group it's like the don't judge a book by its cover thing or don't yeah. like believe everything you hear yeah stuff not just for him but for like anybody like that's like ideal because he's like, yeah he's quite simply like the sweetest person i posted it because i was with them watching the football game oh, was at cody's house and someone's like I, I ran into somebody uh yet yesterday two days ago like oh man it was almost like judgment they're like oh are you friends with johnny manzel i'm like and i already knew it was coming i'm like hey i was like i know what you hear but i was like that's one of the nicest people i've i've met like Facts. ever and i was like but all these of course like if you're that famous like People it's, are always going to say bad shit about you, and he has this weird reputation for not being, but he's, like, the nicest guy ever. You know what's strange? It's like, what is that about people? Like, I don't. I think people just hate it. it okay, even uh, this is a good example. We were watching Football Sunday at Goodwood. I was with my buddy Skov and, and Ben, yeah. and uh, Skov looks at me at one point during the game. We're watching Chiefs-Bengals. He goes, God, I just cannot stand these Chiefs. They're just so annoying, and I'm like, Dude, four years ago, we all loved the Chiefs. So, like, we're just, <laughs> as Americans, if you start to win too much, I'll hate you. Like, Tom Brady just retired, like, officially today. Mm -hmm. Shout out Adam Schefter. Yeah. And he finally retired. And the thing is, is I have not one bad thing to say about Tom Brady, but I am so fucking happy he's gone. Thank God, like, thank God. It, I don't know why. It has nothing to do with him. It's think, just, it's, I think it's he just lost John as a friend. It, but I, I, I love him. <laughs> John quits. I love him as like a football. He's Mine like an inspiration. But like I can't, it's Alabama football. I can't fucking watch it anymore. Yeah, I can't yeah. do it. So I feel like for that, like we got somebody like Johnny or, or all these like famous like athletes or stars or whatever in, in music and acting, and they're like they get too much success. You're like, I don't like that guy anymore. I'm gonna yeah. find something about him that I think is wrong, and I'm gonna blow it up. But it's like that's that's not okay. But it's oddly this weird like human nature. The notion of just like. You're talented, and I'm not. <laughs> and you didn't fucking think that was the most important thing. Like, Johnny, you had God's gift of talent in sports. And the fact that you didn't want to exercise that yeah. and take that on as your life's duty yeah. and purpose to fulfill mm. your talent, you're a fucking loser, and I hate you. Well, it's the, it's the <laughs> Why the fuck thing. does that affect you, though? Like, from this person here. No, it's like, jealousy for sure. It's jealousy, it's but, but he's not jealousy. succeeding. Yeah. Like, you can't make the argument that, like, I get the Tom Brady. Like, I got you. Yeah, you're I'm right. I'm not even saying that the, I get it. Like, you're jealous, like, when you're not doing well and you see people winning, your team's not winning, and they keep winning. You're like, fuck well, those guys. And, and I when, get that. When like, someone's winning, it's how they carry themselves when they're winning. True, and but Tom I'm, Brady is just I'm, like a professional. You're just sick and tired of seeing him win. No, Tom, <laughs> like, Tom, I mean? Tom is, like, humble as hell. Like, he's not. Oh, yeah, he's, he is. Yeah, he's, he's like not, a perfect He's not person. a flashy guy. He is, but. And I'm not saying it's wrong to be flashy when you are winning because it's, I mean, whatever motivates you, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you look at someone like Marcus. Like, he's, he's like, very animated when he's playing. And when he wins, he's very animated. Mm -hmm. And that, like, that rubs people the wrong it way. It does. You know? Which is also funny. Especially in baseball, <laughs> you know, it rubs people the wrong way. But yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with it. No, nothing wrong he with that. He's a good example. People get. All he, chirpy at him. I'm like, dude, this guy's having the most fun yeah, you could have, and you don't like it for side. That this he is, genuinely loves the sport. <laughs> yeah, and he dude. and he likes to succeed at. But it. see, dude. he loses one game. Like, see, you shouldn't have been doing the whole thing. <laughs> I even did it. I, 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 you know, I grew up a Steelers fan, and when Juju Smith was doing TikToks on the thing, I got mad, and then I was like, dude, why are you mad? Like, yeah. why you are you mad? Like, yeah, of fun. you can do whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> Legitimately, it's fifteen so seconds. Weird. Because like the other, like the other thing too, like the Johnny thing is like. Everyone judging, oh, he should be working out this and that. It's like, you don't give the, like, all these athletes, most of them, go out and do very normal people things and then fit in the super athlete things, like the gym stuff or whatever. And that is like crazy superpower. And then some of them don't make it and they get judged because they didn't work hard enough. It's like, maybe they just didn't want to do it. It's like, I was going to say, like, the KD thing. Like, KD leaves o Oklahoma City, goes to uh, the Warriors, and everyone loses their mind. 
And like, I lost my mind in the sense that like, I don't want the Warriors to win because I'm an LA fan. Mm -hmm. um, but I lose my mind on him because I'm like, maybe he just wants to live in the Bay Area. Like, it's a pretty cool city. He's come from Oklahoma it's City, a which thing is small. Life. <laughs> it's a life. Like, maybe he just, that's just where he wants to live. Like, maybe LeBron just wanted to live in Miami. Like, yeah. why are these things bad? But we, as sports fans or whatever, and I guess haters, just get so haters. angry. Haters. But we're just, it's like, I don't know why. It's such a. I have a, a video of Travis reaction. Kelsey on my chug, uh, doing a chug butt on my TikTok, which. I don't. I have a kid running my chick, TikTok. <laughs> Shout out Jarrett. He's crushing it. Yes, he is. Um, I see people out in the like at the bar, like the street. They're like, "Dude, you're crushing it on TikTok." I'm like, Am <laughs> I, 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 know. I have <laughs> fucking no idea. Um, but yo, like, so he posts this thing. It gets Am like, I? Two, it gets like two million. <laughs> really? It gets two million fucking plays, and it's just him. It's a video I took of him in Nashville. Morgan Wallen singing in the background, being a fucking lunatic the way he is. He'll just like get up at a commonplace nashville bar <laughs> this was before he went like he was already superstar but yeah. like not he went to like superstardom like kind of right after this hilarious oh, we can get into that story because you actually been to that that place so i'm with travis it's tight end university camp oh yeah in nashville george kittle, him. kittle yeah. i got all these videos all of them doing chug buds and shit was there a viral video of them just like at uh at, like playing golf like just driving Oh, them too. Yeah, yeah. No, just all, all the tight ends. Like, yeah. It showed yeah. Like, all the tight end swings at, at uh, like a Top Golf or something. Yes. Okay. Just that was in Nashville. Just ripping swings. Yeah. That was yeah. in Nashville. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember seeing that. So that night, like, it's, they just finished it. Like, Travis is, we're sending it, you know? And, and this was when, like, we had just done, like, a Travis Chugbud version of it or something. Mm -hmm. So he's got a bunch of them. Like, we're all doing them. We're in the bar. Morgan's there singing in the background. I'll get to the, the point of why I got here, it was to talk about how fans are, but. <laughs> This story's funny. So Morgan stumbles over to me. He's like, hey, let's go back to yours. You know, you know, my place yeah. was right off the strip. Yeah. So, you know, I got all the tight ends. They're all going to come, right? They're all, a few of them are with me. Like probably Travis, George, a few other guys are with me. Group of people. Morgan brings his whole, you know, <laughs> fucking trickle down Morgan Wallen effect of all the girls chasing after him, whatever. <laughs> We're walking in. We're walking into the fucking, to my penthouse or the penthouse building. And I'm gonna leave the name out, but somebody who's just wild and drunk pulls the fire alarm as we walk in, which is a felony. So I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna leave it out. <laughs> but we walk in and it's the most annoying, like I'm talking, I'm not like a, a little alarm. It was literally like <laughs> that for two hours. And I had I had all the guys come, like, I mean, no one lasted. Everyone lasted like 20, 30 minutes. But like this goes That's on for, this goes on for two hours. I had, I had probably was going to be one of our like noted Nashville nights. Yes, had all the just big boy NFL. It was that kind of energy. Just also randomly the guy from Big Bang Theory, the the, uh, the shorter kind of heavier set guy. I don't know. I don't know the big. Like Bang the main Theory. dude. Yeah, the main guy. Oh damn! And he's like, your place is fucking beautiful. But I gotta get the fuck out of here. I'm gonna blow my <laughs> yeah, fucking head here. off. Yeah. <laughs> So like we're on the roof trying to avoid it and like it's loud as fuck yeah. up there yes and it's like literally like can get in trouble for it so yeah. everyone just got the fuck out and i was like i don't know who did it <laughs> um but anyways i post a video the kid posts a video of the tiktok from that night like a week ago or or like 10 you know within the last seven days and it goes viral and the people weighing in on this are just i literally like I, you know, I check in on TikTok sometimes and like just see what, what's, what's been posted and shit because he kind of just has a whole file of shit. And I'm <laughs> yeah. like, some of this could be a little touchy, <laughs> yeah. a little touchy on, on TikTok. But um, people are just like, oh, how, like, what a fucking loser, bro. You're going to lose. Like, they're just like, yeah. can't even take into context that like, maybe it didn't, this isn't a current video. Yeah. Like, Number you know one. what I mean? One. <laughs> Two, like. The guy's drinking one beer, <laughs> yeah, and like they're just taking so much, like, and then and then they lose, and it goes viral again. Like, huh? How's this one taste? Yeah, you know, like this didn't age well. People gain too much joy from seeing other giving people. out hate, not yeah. even just seeing, like giving. Like that's what I see with social media. It's like it it's gets sad. people's rocks off to be a dick. Yeah, and it's so odd because it's a common saying is if we're in person you would never say it and there's also a common thing on twitter is like if travis like i see it all the time with barstool stuff someone will say something person will respond like calmly and be like oh you know this and they'll be like oh no i was just messing with you like, mm -hmm. like no you weren't you're were, you're trying to get a moment to get a reaction you won but it's like what did that what did that actually mean to you it says, to go tell your buddy that's the thing i was thinking oh do you go to tell your buddies the next day like 
Dude, I made I made fun of Travis on uh, Instagram yesterday. Dude, my it's comment like, got sixty likes. Like, what is that? What does that do? Like, truly, what does that do for you? But that's that's that is the one actually, not one, but one of the good things I feel like about social media is learning about how people operate operate with their negativity because it it is so gross to watch it makes me want to be so far from that ever that it's helpful like you realize you guys are some ugly sad people yeah like this person's living their life they're already upset like they are to your point that video isn't even current they couldn't even do enough research to figure that out Mm. and then second if that is how he decides to cope with it it's not like he left the thing and is stoked they lost. I've never met an athlete who's like, oh, good season, but whatever. Yeah. It's like everyone's distraught. Yeah. You gotta go do you can then go do live your life. You gotta yeah. be a person still. Says, Don't waste another day of your life just being a sad bum. Mm. Like go if something's gonna make you happy, go do something that's gonna make you happy. It says more about them than oh than it you. does. Always for sure. every time. Always. Gary V's a big I do the opposite. I, I like to throw good stuff out there. Like whenever The Rock puts out a banging movie <laughs> opening night, I'm just like at the rock sick movie dude so is this is this where you want me to point out the fact that he's responded to you like three times hey you've been you're 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 six Twitter. times six times Kilmer yeah. Twitter <laughs> has, Kilmer have this favorite. weird like yo no they got it they got a thing i think he might be into you or something like why does he keep responding to you he has like 18 million fucking i gotta tell you I, I have an in i finally have an in his, you do his uh his wife's sister is a fan of yours and, and messages me all the time. Hell yeah. His wife's sister? sister. Oh, yeah. His sister. Get the rock to a show. Oh his my. sister-in-law, dude. And his, all right, all right, do me a favor. His his wife is a musician. You got to do a feature. <laughs> Slant it up. Do the feature. Fucking hook the me rock's up, a rapper now. He had that Yo, song get me in the, Get me in the room with the rock. We'll chop it up. You know? I'm just saying, his wife's a musician. I, mean, I think, I think there's some synergy would, here. What, what do you, be, be honest with yourself. Yeah. Forget the cameras are here. I think about this all the time. So give <laughs> you an honest right, answer. So Max is awesome, but just let's we'll take Max out of this. We sit Dwayne The Rock Johnson right here. Yeah, what, yeah. How are you acting right now? I'd play it cool. What are you doing inside, though? Do you have a little bit of a boner? Physically, physiologically, well, I'm pretending are you you're actually, Dwayne for a second. Oh, are you actually this. having a boner? A jo- little man boner? I'm, I'm gonna narrate this. John has a boner and is staring right in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> First, I'm gonna think about his. Uh, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna think about how great his physique is. <laughs> yes, yeah, th- this is where I thought this was going. He works hard for it. He deserves to be commended. You want for to the celebrate physique. it? You want to celebrate it? His physique should be commended, and I think it's gonna look just as great in person as it does on Instagram. <laughs> 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 That's number one. Yeah. That's number one. And then two, I mean, there's just like a myriad of questions that I would want to ask him. Yeah, I mean, the what's three- number one question? Um, Jesus, close um, your eyes and, and picture him <laughs> as Dwayne the Rock Johnson. I don't know how to do his impressions. I mean, I, I would ask how many grams of protein he eats a day, but there's so many articles that are out there. That I, would yeah. just, I already know the answer. No, no, so. no, don't give me a joke. Yeah, you got one shot. Elevate, <laughs> elevator pitch. Yeah, elevator. You got your elevator pitch moment with Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Yeah. And it can go any way you want it to go. What are you going to say? Elevator okay. pitch. Like if I'm just in an elevator with him and for You're not necessarily seconds. pitching something yeah. to gain. Just yeah. like, what is that moment going to be with him? What are you going to say? I think about this a lot because I don't want to I don't want to fanboy him because like that's not the relationship I want to have because he has so many fans. Why would I want to Why would I want to just be like a, one of the other fans? You, you don't want to group yourself in with the fans because oh, you're, you you're more one, special than him. I think, he has one second to be his friend. Like I he think, needs no, to. No, not just friend. I like like a peer, you know? <laughs> Like, Are you serious? Like I think I I I uh, I, I like law of attraction. Like I I, I like yeah. try to I try to draw this in where like there will be a time where he and I are peers and we're doing something together. <laughs> hey, I, I fuck you know I love that. You know what I mean? Like I truly think that. So I'm not just gonna be a fanboy and be like, oh dude, you like you inspired me my whole life. He dude, has. you've responded. To, <laughs> hey bro, go through. The, you've responded to me, dude. I have here a in June. <laughs> you respond, in 2000. Oh, I got God, this 2018. 2018. I'm not gonna, dude, I'm 2018 not gonna, I'm not you responded. That. Because I see people do that to you, and you're like, "All right, yeah, cool, man." <laughs> yeah, it does. It automatically puts you in a little bit exactly. of a box. Yeah. And like, have I had have I had a life size cardboard cutout of him in my basement <laughs> since I was ten years old? Yes. That doesn't matter though. Yeah. You, <laughs> you know? know. Hey, that's either here nor there. Because I think I will get to the point where he and I will be peers, and I and I and that's going to happen one day. You're gonna maybe direct a movie, and he's your lead. I mean, yeah, maybe if he's lucky enough. If he's lucky, if he's still hot. <laughs> See, that's why I like him. Still he's still, he would still evaluate. He wouldn't just give him the role. He'd still no, make he would. him he's, work. He's, he's, ca- he's capping. <laughs> okay, if okay. Dwayne, if Dwayne right has now I would. 1% of interest, <laughs> it's his role. <laughs> it's like, but the role's a 17-year-old. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Figure it out. No, we're, I'm going to rewrite the entire movie. 
<laughs> but we just sold this exact script. No, I'm going to rewrite it. It doesn't matter. But John, you've been writing for 40 years and you haven't had anyone accept the script. It doesn't matter. I yeah. need I need Dwayne let's the get, Rock. Let's get Zoa Energy in here. Let's get like fucking let's get every brand that he has. Let's get it in the movie. Fuck it. Fuck it. <laughs> we'll do it live. So this uh I'm rooting for this. Yeah, I could see that happening. Movie or no movie, I'm rooting for the French, the pure ship. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like we have a real end, so if you need yeah, me, I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah, wingman you. I'll wingman you. I'll wingman you. I need you bad. I need you really bad. <laughs> she's a fan? Like, how big of a fan? Like, to the point where she's, like, and she's like commenting on my stories and stuff on Instagram. Oh, Deb, you're, like, in. The oh, sister-in-law. So like, sister I, I have a theory that The Rock is actually asking her to do it as a buffer. <laughs> He's like... <laughs> Do you know John and Mike? Do you don't, think you can? Don't don't put that in my head. I don't need that. <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to sleep. Tonight. In the back of my head, I'm like, what if? It's, That'd be what even if it's funnier true? to see meets him. He goes, hey, so was this your idea? <laughs> to Dwayne on my sees you. He's like, John, <laughs> stop it, stop it, um, stop it, stop it. Anyway, segueing from Dwayne, it's uh, where are you right now? As we sit here, what's the date? I don't know anything. The first. Um, it's February first. Feb one. One. Where are you right now in regards to that golf season that you talked about and your your, your ranking, like your tenth ranking? Where in the golf season? Because I don't understand the golf seasons whatsoever. Where are we right now? We are probably through the first third. Yeah, we're probably right around the first third because we start in September. Yeah, yeah, probably about thirds. So we got two thirds. About left. a third in. This is a big part of season because um, this is like the real part of season. Like starts in. Like as far the season starts in September or whatever now, but like it really like the meat of it, things people love are like January on because we get the majors come up. Uh, there's four majors, and then the players championship is like the players major. So you have five huge tournaments, mm -hmm. and like that's what starts to get hyped up. At, at so this point. I say that to say like it's February. We're in Scottsdale because we've barely left since we came <laughs> here, since we've migrated here. Um, this is a this is a really fucking, this is like the it week. This is like the it time in, oh, in yeah. Scottsdale right now. Like I was thinking about leaving because I'm old town legitimately got old yes. <laughs> to me. I'm just like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> Any more blue boys. So I'm clearing my system. I'm going to go blue boy till failure oh, one yeah. more time. Oh, yeah. and for the record, and, sorry to cut you off. A blue boy, did you know has a half a, a, half a can of Red Bull in each one? That's cap. S Skis I, I, didn't even know it had sure? Red Bull at all. So I was with, I was just out in Old Town with the, and I was just like, how maybe, much? Maybe they all make them. Different. I was like, how much commonly? Oh, hey, Mrs. Steve. Mrs. Steve. <laughs> I was like, how much uh, commonly? You know, like, what would you say? How how much Red Bull is in? Yeah. And they were like, you know, like one third, one fourth. Okay, yeah. I've I've seen which someone, makes sense. They're I've seen someone do a half. I've seen yeah, maybe, it, but probably not the norm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All but right. Still They're a changing. ton of an unhealthy amount of Red Bull. I've seen you do like twenty of them, and they wonder why at two a.m. I'm like, <laughs> where are we going? Let's go back to the house. <laughs> you know, like go fucking compete at a high level at the house. You know, and whatever whatever recreational <laughs> game you throw yeah. at me. So sorry, keep going. Um, John, you, uh, before John rudely interrupted me. Um, uh yeah so like i was thinking about leaving scottsdale and, and i just got firm nose from i got like firm no, hard like look me in the eye if i need to sit you down i will don't leave no this is it um as a player tell us how the vibe so waste management it's is that the official name waste yeah, management, waste management. Open? Uh, it used to be called like phoenix open it's waste management open they call it the greenest show on grass did, or something. Did the, did, he did, skis calls it the greatest show on did grass. Did the Garbage Men sponsor it? I don't understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's a random big sponsor. but Garbage I mean, Men of America? Yeah, it's, uh, this, well, they, they do like a little, um, it's, it sounds so ridiculous knowing what the actual tournament looks like, but they have a big like initiative of like recycling and like all that stuff yeah. while people are just getting as blacked out as they possibly can. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting recycled. Yeah, your whole yeah your organs are recycling. While people litter on the <laughs> yeah. I'm literally recycle recycling myself. But it right is now. Uh, so um, best way to scale it uh, is or to explain it is um, it's it's huge the whole week. Uh, like people out the whole week they. It's a golf tournament, but their stands are huge, and they enclose the 16th hole as par three. It's a shitty golf hole, like regularly. I practice there all the time, and when the stands are gone, it's just like it's unrecognizable. But they enclose it, and there's so many people, and you feel like I mean, you played actual like real sports, but like we play like <laughs> on a, uh, so you're playing on a good day. I got well. like a cluster of people around me. This is a full-on stadium. Yeah. Like it is 
it's insane. It's like you like are like almost for me, it's like suffocating how many people are there and like they're all yelling or whatever. You have like a little crew in the bottom left that like heckles, like they have note cards and like know what to yell at people and like That's whatever. Cool. It's really cool. But like Wednesday they do a celebrity pro am. So it's like every week we play a pro am which is like uh, one pro will play with like four, usually executives or vendors or whatever the main sponsor, but they throw in um, like athletes or singers or whatever to play on Wednesday. And it's Bob funny. Barker. Can't it's, believe they didn't ask me after that funny. chip went viral. Yeah, hey, the they fun. probably should have. But like the lineup <laughs> six, so like all them being there is cool. And then all the fans obviously love that. Um, your boy, I was talking to Goff today about it because we were trying coming? to play together. He's coming. Uh, Sick. Oh, hell Walker yeah. Bueller's playing. Just got the. I got to. I got to call him right before I came here because I've been grinding to get him a spot in it. Because he, he he wanted to play. And I got to call him, and it was so funny. This guy, it's just, the golf thing, to, as a tangent, sorry, the golf thing's so funny because I, I this guy's like a Cy Young, yeah. like superstar pitcher. Like, every time we're on, he's like, cool as shit. Like, whatever. He's like, he's one of my, like, favorite, I mean, I'm a huge Dodger fan, but I've gotten to know him a little bit. He's one of like, my favorite people because he's, like, a normal dude. But yeah. he's, like, cool. He's, like, got the whole yeah. athlete thing. Yeah. I text him, I'm like, hey, um, you're in, like, Wednesday. You're good. Can you just please call, like, this dude just because you had to, like, register for it. One second later, I get a FaceTime. I'm in. <laughs> like he's all jacked yeah. up. I'm like, this is so Runs cool. Out the backyard. Like, he's, yeah. he's so stoked. So I don't know. That stuff's fun. But so that's but so that's Wednesday, and then the tournament starts, and it's just it's nuts. Like there's just so many people. But to scale it, a really really big golf tournament, I would say like a, a, a in one day, a big day would be like twenty five thousand people. And on Saturday two years ago, it had two hundred and twenty thousand people. I mean, it's it's not real life. It's like it's not for golf. It's insanity. So is this an important just golf, forget the crowd. No, it's this, the same as. This is like kind of, of just a regular. It's just, yeah, it's not a it's major. It's not a major, it's nothing. But it feels like a major. Hell yeah. And how, how do you play with the huge crowds comparative to the smaller crowds? Do you play honestly, better, you think? Yeah, I, I played you? well there every year. Yeah. Uh, I, I got six one year, which was a rush because you play those last few holes with. It's already exciting, right? With all yeah. the people. But then with like a chance to win, mm -hmm. you're like. Talk about blue boys. Like, I didn't need one. If I had one blue boy, I might probably pass out. Uh, so yeah. it's like, it, I, but I learn a lot about myself through it because I've played well there. And I, I realize that a big part is because I know that a lot of people are going to be yelling and talking and being kind of like, it's obnoxious, like, in, like compared yeah. to my normal day. Right. But like, I put myself in like a fake bubble and I don't, like, I, I, Doesn't matter. I, I, I it's like every, it's, it's like, well, I was just talking about how, like, Joe says, like, I don't give myself any, like, empathy towards stuff. It's like, I know all this shit's going to come at me. Like, I'm prepared for all this adversity that, like, nothing can bug me. Because, like, I'm already ready for everyone else to bug me. Like, nothing bugs me. And I actually really enjoy that. And it really does become white noise at a point. It's so loud. It's got to be like playing a baseball game or a football game. <laughs> it's so loud that, like, it just it, you're, it drowns you out. Yeah. Like, you can almost get into your thoughts because it's like, yeah. I, I can hear a lot of things. But it's really hard to play in front of 10 people because if one person moves... I can hear them. If I'm 10,000 people are by me, I can't really hear anything, like, it, it, oddly. So I like that aspect. Is it a lot? Yeah, it's a lot, but it's... Do other I, players just get pissed? So there's half the field. <laughs> I have to, so people, who, a lot of players don't play it. They oh. hate it. I think the players that do love it because some people cannot... Do they like? Don't, they don't. They're they not wired for it. it. It's they didn't much. pass the vibe check at all. But I have, I have like all my funniest stories are from like the usually heckling is so dumb. But that one maybe because they just like perfectly like lubricated. What like, they give you? The funniest one I ever heard. Uh, it might have been. It might have been last year. Last year, two years ago. Uh, it's always Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, that final round and Mahomes was in. The Chiefs and Mahomes were in the uh, Super Bowl. And on the 17th hole, there's like all these like people across the water on the left, and they're all like kind of chill there for a bit. It's like one of like the main spots. And you know, I hit my ball on the green, marked it, and like you know, my Joe cleans. He's got my towel, and usually you know, I'll toss to him, whatever. But he's like across the green, and like I chucked it. Felt like Mike and fucking heave this bitch, and it was money throw. Like hit him right here, and I hear this guy go, "Oh, Patrick Mahoma," <laughs> and I point. I'm like, "All right, like that's." Fun. You got funny. me. You like, break the fourth good. wall. Yeah, great plan it. words. Great plan so every once in a while, but that that one's just. But it's different because you expect it and you're waiting for it. And it, uh, before you came here, I was telling Blue my first taste of this tournament. Uh, never played it before. Start on ten. Ten is uh, kind of on the way to sixteen, where everyone likes to go. You wait in this long ass line to get into the, the big stadium, mm -hmm. and it's different, dude. Like. Uh, in general, you don't get a lot of like females come to many golf tournaments, mm -hmm. especially not like twenty-five-year-old good-looking ones. Like yeah. it's not—it's very odd. And they're dressed in like the heels and the skirt and like the whole. They're going to—they're going to bottle blonde. It's an they're event. They're going to yeah, yeah, like yeah, that's what like, they're doing. Yeah. And 
Um, they even have bottle blonde at the yeah. course. Yeah. So you don't have to answer this, but have you ever seen a set of titties at this thing? No, I have not. <laughs> not at all. But I've seen. Not I've, you personally, but has anyone else? Seen oh, I'm this sure. Oh, the, oh, you should see the cop. Uh, so uh, you get a cop walk with you every group because just because we need like a little more whatever. Like sa the safety's not great there. And uh, the story, I ask, I always ask I don't the guys feel like, safe. do you like this? Like, is this a good fun day? Like, oh yeah, outside playing, watching golf, whatever. But they tell me stories of, like breaking up, like you know, the acts of sex in the porta potties, which I think is fucking. <laughs> disgusting Acts of sex that's pretty it's pretty low <laughs> pretty low this porta potty not i've never fucked in a porta potty have you that sounds like something you would do no i haven't i uh, i don't think i could get past the smell i've never i've actually I, never i can't blame I've it on the never. smell i fucked next to a dumpster like a hundred times so i that's can't actually true i can't blame it on the smell How big, is that big possible? i'll tell you why i think the claustrophobia it's would tour be tough. it's that's tour bus the alleyway yeah yeah there's always your it's like the Mike Stud era of like you don't have to say words, you know, just like, and then like you just like escape to I know, the alleyway. I know a great dumpster over here. I had sex with a. I, I the, saw an amazing dumpster around the corner. Yeah, there was a the last girl I did it with. She had a TB12 Tom Brady tattoo in her ass. Yep. And I Sick. wanted I wanted to do it just because she wasn't a, she wasn't a looker by any means, but she <laughs> she had the tattoo, and I was like, it, it has it's it's fate. It has I mean, to it definitely made her more attractive seeing the TV twelve on there. It just <laughs> it just said so much about dude. It. it was in Tampa before Brady played for Tampa. I mean, there's something going on there. <laughs> Maybe there's something there. That's weird. You, you deserve a ring. I never thought about that. <laughs> I think That's you weird. should get a ring. <laughs> I think I, you earned I, it. I think I brought the cosmos all together there. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, so I walk I walk out this T first hole ever playing, like, and there's this long there's this long. <laughs> I don't know how to segue. segue from Dumpster sex. <laughs> segue out of that. I'm just gonna leave. I'm the if I was being honest, I was trying to figure out how to segue. I couldn't figure. There's no, there's no book on that. <laughs> so there's this long ass line of people, right, getting ready to go in this thing, and like I'm just trying to cross the car by to get in the fairway, and there's two girls or whatever, like our, like my age, and she, uh, I go, excuse me, I have Joe next to me. I'm in a full getup. I got clubs getting being carried, and she gives me like a, like a look. Like she basically, yeah. no she idea basically, she's out of golf. She basically was like, you know, I have a boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And I was like, so I said, excuse me. Like I'm trying to get through. And she like makes this look like, basically like I'm cutting her in line. I'm like, the turn, there's a golf tournament going on. No idea. They're I thought it was happy going on. No, they, but that's the thing. We, so the players, we always say it's a, it's a, a party that a golf tournament broke out at because that yeah. is such a sideshow, mm. but it is part of it. And you get some people that are there for the tournament, but more of my, like my friends are coming to town and my hometown friends, Zach and all that. And he just called me. He's like, how fun is this thing? I said, it's the best week you'll ever have. Uh, like I promise. So, and he's like, he's just coming to party. I don't, I told him, I was like, don't watch me go like do all the fun shit. So the boys will be there. Oh yeah. You uh you got us. Were you the kind of got helping Graham get yeah, us set Yeah, I, I got Graham some some passes for you guys. Um so cuz I mean, you don't necessarily want to walk all day. Like this part you can just kind of base you're basically going to an outdoor bar. Yeah. And it's I've never rad. gone to a golf tournament, but this This will not be a golf this, tournament. Actually, that's a lie. I went with Sagan in Dallas once. They had Oh a big, yeah, that one's fun too. That's a, big, a lot like this one. It's just scaled down. Yeah, yeah. It was fun. It yeah. was, it was I didn't How does he even walk around that joint? Um, this was probably like, yeah, so this was like, I would say four or five years ago, not to say he wasn't already famous then or whatever, but like he was new in Dallas kind okay. of, and like, yeah, people were coming up and stuff, yeah. but not I, was like, funny. I actually remember that because I played that and it was before we knew each other, but I was, I, you know, I was told you I'd listen, I've listened to music since mm -hmm. like, oh nine, I guess. And I remember someone's like, uh, someone pointed and they're like, that's Tyler Sagan over there. And I was like, that's fucking Mike Stone. Mike Studs over like, there. And, and they're like, what? I'm what's like, he doing? you guys don't watch Tori's Boring? It's the greatest segment <laughs> on the internet. Represent. But it was uh, so funny. Right. Yeah. That, that, so that's a really, that is actually a good comparison to this one because it's got a very similar like clientele. People there more so to have fun than watch golf. And right. I, I wouldn't work every week f for like the golf thing, but I think it's really important to have a few of them that are like this because it is supposed to be fun. It's still a sport. You can yell. And it's also, again, it's much more like kosher to yell if everyone's yelling yeah it sucks if i'm about to hit and then you just start yelling like that's not that cool it's cool if everyone's yelling because then it's not so bothersome it's, it's ironic how like the quiet can be loud sometimes oh yeah you know like, of, the, so there's times where the silence is deafening it's, it's deafening. brutal i yeah. can't sleep in dead silence i hate it yeah yeah but even like even just like with your internal dialogue and like oh yeah that notion of just like one false sound when you're not right can Dude, just the, the throw first you the off. first tee at the Masters is the quietest thing I've ever been a part of, and because they're first off, like Gus has like a lot of rules, and it's a very like strict thing, and there's also no phone, so no one's like everyone's paying like full on attention. They're like very present, um, and first time I played it, no fans, so it's different. 
The second time I played it, there were fans, and you get on the first tee, and they s announce your name, and then on the first tee, it just goes like no one's breathing, like, <laughs> and it is so quiet, and you're also nervous, and then you're adding all the like the loud, like the the loudness of the silence, and I hit the ball, and I walk off. Joe always asks me sometimes, he goes, "How nervous were you?" I was like, "Joe, what the." fuck is that i was like someone needed to like <laughs> cough or something i thought everyone might have died while my head was down like there was not the one noise really i couldn't do it i'd rather yeah. you scream on 16 than whatever that was i can't do that <laughs> whatever that was, <laughs> that was Dude, i don't that i mean you're just you're just a fucking great golfer so like <laughs> but just like the it's the only sport that has that element where it's just like it's just an awkwardness <laughs> to the viewing of it one, they're like, they're like, why are they so fucking close? Like, <laughs> yeah, why are you why? on the green? Like, I feel like they're like on the fucking oh, yeah. tee box. It's and then, too close. And then they'll like line it. Like, so just like knowing me and like how I hit it, I would literally like take that guy's face off. Well, it's that's like, why the, the celebrity pro is scary. Because you got as many yeah, people and then you have Jared Goff, who's I yeah. think, admittedly not a very good golfer. <laughs> yeah. And there's people like this. Like, buddy, you're going to lose all your full of fucking <laughs> titleist. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's really, that's actually, I've never asked you that, like what it feels to stand over in, in that. It's weird, but it's, it's cool. So the, the only thing I could ever compare it to in like contrast is I threw a first pitch out of Dodger game once. And again, it's not my normal habitat. It's not like I got some fucking cannon or anything. So I was like beyond nervous. But what was interesting was when I looked into like the backdrop, like it was such a sea of people. It felt like nobody in a mm -hmm. weird way. Mm -hmm. And it was comforting in that. Whereas in golf, especially if it's not, because like Waste Management is the only event that has a s true sea of people. You can like, you, you, you can almost like, cut out each person you like feel a little too intimate like, yeah. with everybody and then you start to realize how close people are and if you hit it in like the trees or whatever like people are already over there there's no more ropes like they're on top of you and you feel very i guess you get used to it but it's very it's, it's just it's awkward because you feel like you're supposed to be separated it, in some way yeah. and you're not and now you're like amongst it like last week i hit a ball right we're almost done we had a bunch of people watching because i was in a group of uh kepka mm. and um and I like hit my shot and then everyone starts to run to like get to the next thing. But now all of a sudden, like I have no space. And I'm not saying people are like touching whatever, but I'm like, wait, what just happened? Like I've been like protected by this like fucking little yarn rope. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like part of it. So that stuff like you you get used to, but it, pick it up on in the beginning is it's intimidating. Cause then again, it's the noise mixed with like, they're just other people who are there watching. But again, some just to be there. And like, you don't know, you don't ever know what's going to happen. So it's like the odd, whereas in, other sports it's like you know everyone's gonna yell they're gonna boo if you do something bad this and that this is the only tournament this waste management where they'll boo you if you do bad and i think that's cool i really do think that it's is cool. cool i mean you should get booed you stunk it's like, funny like <laughs> let it rip it's funny uh you get like punished to like oh, you're amongst the peasants when you hit yeah. it when you hit a yeah. bad oh, shot yeah, you're yeah. just like and like everyone's just around crowding your space after you just hit a horseshit shot and you hear like, him i heard i heard the guy last week he's like I heard him mumble to his friends. So I'm like, God, what a bad drive. And I'm like, drive? How do you end up here? What a fuck? And I'm like, what do I say? Yeah, he's 100% right. Yeah. Do my best, man. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Um, well, man, it's been a fucking pleasure. I can't wait till it's you guys a pleasure. see it. I'm really excited. We will make sure we catch you. I can't wait till you hear how many because just because of this pod and all this stuff, the amount of fucking the mic calls you ready that i get i get called <laughs> steve all day i get all day so you get, you're it gonna get to see it everywhere Love ever that. since tampa for some reason it is fucking everywhere mm. and it's fun so you'll get to you'll get to be actually like a part of it <laughs> i'm not going to talk about tampa actually i guess we'll end with this but the only time i've been handedly beaten in beer pong in a parking lot at McFadden's <laughs> after hours. I want to say it was windy and it was it was windy. Bad weather. That was my advantage. Yeah. I think that was it. I don't know. I want to say they made a plot. I got my ass kicked. <laughs> they did not put it was one like, in. It was cups I didn't like. And like, but he's playing on the same cup. So I can't say anything. Yeah. So, you know, he kicked my ass. He kicked my ass. Oh, Is it one-on-one? One-on-one? On one? One on one? No, no, two, no, no. He had, it was, he had it was blue. team, but I just didn't. Like, it was me and blue. We like yeah. lost. And yeah. like, it never happens. You know, I've like, never won indoors against Mike, but I got the outdoor. The, the yeah. elements were for me. Yeah, I don't know what it was. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was. Maybe it was just I th you had you had played that day, hadn't you? I played. Yeah. Maybe just a little bit of your confidence no, carried I over. No, I had all vibing. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I still haven't recovered from that. I'm still picking up the <laughs> good. pieces. Good. That makes me feel nice. But good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and I got some books for you. I think I think one book I I need you to get immediately is the monk who sold his Ferrari. Okay um i just finished it took a real 
real slow read. Like, okay. Loved it so much. I didn't want to miss anything. Okay. Um, so I like you got to read like it immediately. Almost annotating and it. It's really good. It's okay. really good. And I think just got to make sure you're, you're staying on it. Yeah. You know, because I think it's tomorrow. so important. I think it's so important for just you maintaining the vibe you're on. Cool. Keep spreading the gospel, Steve. Yes, sir. I love it. Always. Cheers. Thank you, yeah, buddy. Thank you. Yes, sir. Kilmer. That's fire. Thank All you, right. John. I can't wait till you meet The Rock. <laughs>